All right. So today we have Patrick. Um, Patrick, where are you based right now? Uh, I'm based right, to, right outside of Boston, Massachusetts, USA. Beautiful. Yeah. And how old are you? Uh, forget I'm, how old uh, I'm, t- I'm 21 and I'm currently in the college dorm room and I just That's wasted good. four years of my life on a finance degree that I will not be using. So <laughs> shit's awesome. <laughs> Love it. Um, quick question. Um, where did you meet your girlfriend? Was it in school? Wow. Great question. Start off with this. All right. Uh, no, I actually met her back in high school. Um, so we've been together for over close to four and a half years at this point, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I always have the mentality and I think a lot of people that may check this out, like if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you're going to get after it, whatever, like you don't want any distractions. It's like, I think as a man, like your goal, that like entrepreneurial drive should be like number one. And I always told myself that if, if it ever came to the point where that became disaligned or out of alignment where like I had a girlfriend and she was very needy in my time, it'd be like, it'd be over. Like it would be over in a second. And so I've been really blessed to have someone that was also very driven and very like independent and that we can both work hard independently. We have a relationship and we boost each other up. So it's not like she's like, like she understands when I'm working into the night or can't hang out on a weekend. So yeah, Yeah. it's been, it's been great. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. The reason why I asked was because you said that school was, was a waste, but it's like, yo, if you, if you get to oh. meet the girl of your life, or no. at least the cost of it, you get that. Did we get that? <laughs> oh, yeah. <man. laughs> then yeah, that was definitely, uh, definitely a lot of money wasted and time <laughs> mostly, but no, yeah. good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, awesome, man. Yeah. So um, for, for, um, some people who are going to watch this, this, uh, this interview probably have, um, I think you've, you've been in many programs. I think you've, uh, yeah, you've yeah. Also done other interviews. So they'll probably, I haven't really seen the other interviews you've done before. So hopefully I'm not going to be asking the same questions as other people have asked you. Uh, but for me personally, what I'd like to do is, um, if you can just describe like where you're at right now, like briefly, right. Yeah. Like what businesses you're running school, and, uh, and then we can just take it back to yeah, yeah. maybe six months, 12 months ago. And yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so just let us know where you're at right now. Before I get into that, I think you mentioned something pretty good. Like, I don't know, I'm on other interviews. And, like, one of the most annoying things I see in this space is people reaching out and being like, who taught you all your knowledge? Or, like, who gave you, like, all, like, who should I invest in? I'm like, bro, <laughs> I'm going to invest in everyone because I'm trying to learn as much as possible, like, I'm yeah. going to figure out there's system, there's stuff to be learned everywhere. So, so um, and it's like, bro, like, and people think that like, I'm being paid off to be on this. Like I am raw as hell. I'm real as hell right now. I wouldn't be on here if I was, yeah. there's like, no, there's nothing behind the scenes. And any interview I'm on is because the person I'm talking to like brought real value to my business. So yeah. just want to clear that up because I've seen people, like people get like, if you're on multiple student interviews, you get like shit for it. I'm like, bro, yeah. like, we're all, we're trying to learn as much as possible here. Come on. And it's, and um, it's, and uh, before I actually let you go, it's uh, with this point, I think you've, this is probably the best point that you could have made for this interview. And it's probably worth like, maybe people who are watching this, this, this video can even stop now. And the, you guys will have learned your, the, one of the best lessons. Okay. And let me give you my own, um, my own take on this point that he just made. One of the biggest, um, one of the biggest perspective and insight you can have in business is the fact that the reason why someone else is making more than you is simply because they know better than you, right? Now, what you can also understand from that is that if you have access to money, you can buy that person's insights and they can have nothing like you can literally buy whatever they have best you can access it yeah so for me it's like when i see people doing half a mil a month other people making a mil a month other people making three mil a month i'm like well the only reason i'm not where they're at is because i'm actually just lazy with my money because um because i could literally just buy whatever they they're they're currently it cut out but can you still hear me can you still hear me? Yeah, We're good? yeah I can hear you. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, so for yeah. me, that's my mindset. It's like um, I can always like buy every knowledge out there, all right? Imagine if you just go through life and you only get one teacher or one learn from one person and, you're, and there are limits. So let's say you only learn from someone who's making 100K a month. 
That means that you can never really go past them because you only got the insights to get to a hundred. Right. Right. And, and, you know, different business owners are different are have better talent. So I talk with people who are really good at operations. I talk with people who are really good at acquisition. I talk with people who are really good at fulfillment service delivery. Right. And, you, you combine insights from the greats, you know, Alex Hormozy, uh, Sam Ovens, Nick Hosman, um, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people who are doing a lot of different stuff. And you merge that. I personally think that I'm a mixture of a whole bunch of experts and I've just yeah. created my, my own wave. And that's what makes me me. And that's what makes us different in a way, you know, and that's what makes you different because no one who's went through the programs, maybe one of the programs that you've been through, is going to have the same success as you because you've had multiple perspectives, right? Right, right, but, absolutely. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Cool. So yeah, let us know how every you can you can go over you know yeah, yeah. revenue wise all that good stuff, but just let us know your current life situation. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. So um, yeah, I got into the space. Um, basically, I got into the space accidentally. So. Also a short junior year of college or third year of college, um, I was studying finance and it was holiday break. And I was like, man, I need to figure out something entrepreneurial because I do not want to be working for a bank and just hate my life. So um, basically I was like, you know what? The only skill that I do have is video creation, content creation. Um, So started with just like local content creation, which I, I didn't even know what SMMA was, but I like kind of did that without really knowing like, about like this whole space. And then, um, yeah, I kind of fell down the rabbit hole, got more into e-commerce, realized that I want, like my biggest passion really is the fitness space and that I could run an agency that serves those customers. Um, so I really got tapped into that and I scaled my own agency, uh, which is called Omedia. Um, I scaled that to, I think I did at 16, I hit in like about a year or a little less than nine months got that like 16k a month um but like there's a lot of issues with it and i was kind of reaching my ceiling there's a lot of internal problems um so basically what i I, what happened was one of my clients for that e-commerce agency i was a young guy had a seven figure fitness apparel brand and he was actually doing consulting for fitness brands um on more like influencer marketing affiliate and i was like oh that's pretty cool um, and so we were hopping on calls, just like, obviously I was serving him. He was my client. He was paying me. We we're hopping on calls and we kind of be- became friends and, and formed a kind of partnership relationship. Um, and he also had this other partner who, uh, you know, is, um, very skilled at like creative, like probably one of the best guys I've seen for like media production and creative, all that good stuff. So long story short, it became like a no brainer that like, there's something there and that we should kind of pursue something together because we all had different skill sets. And one of the biggest issues I ran into um, as a paid ads agency is that creatives, like I wasn't really controlling the creatives, a lot of problems there. Um, Companies would come to me thinking I'd solve all their problems by running ads for them. That was not the case. There's a lot more problems that need to be solved. Mm -hmm. So that ended up being the visionary group, which is what we are now. Um, We started that two months ago, which is pretty crazy. Um, Maybe not even two months ago. Um, we were at zero, started at zero with that agency. We're now like approaching 25 to 30 K a month on that. And like with like, I'm, I'm not even like gassing myself up right now. Obviously it's three owners. I'll, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be real. Right. But, um, I really see in that be, you know, getting to 50, 60 plus, um, here in the next few months, just based upon the conversations we're having. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's really where we're at. We're, we really want to be the go-to guys in the fitness space. Um, yeah. You know, we're, we're trying to work our way into industry. We're meeting with cool people. And uh, that's really where the passion lies. It's really a passion project. Um, at the same time, it's, you know, delivering a lot of real value to these companies. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, I want to come back to this, uh, you know, new offer that you guys have a bit after, but yeah. can you just talk to me? Cause right now you're, you're, you know, you're in college. How, well, first, not just how do you balance business and, 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 and school, but like what, what, what mindset or what perspective, what worldview do you have that makes you balance it? Because I feel like for me personally, the reason why I think most people aren't as successful mm-hmm. is not because they can't, it's not because the thing that needs to be done is impossible, but it's just because they lack the perspective and the will to actually do it. So for you, can you just let us know, like, why 
you, yeah. you why or how why what makes you balance these two things yeah 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 um so i'll be real like at the beginning when i had my doubts in my own entrepreneurial journey i was very much like i was like a decent student and so i always wanted to maintain that um so i would be like it was it was brutal like i was i was trying to study i was trying to run my business and my business was pretty stagnant like it really wasn't doing well yeah. and so i kind of adopted this kind of like zero options mentality where it's like all right i know for certain that i don't want to do go into like an i know it's so cliche but like a nine to five job and work in finance even if the pay is good right um and i knew that the other the real vehicle where i could be happy loving what i'm doing is you know some sort of business so i was like you know what um f it like i'm just gonna go all in and if that means my grades go down like i don't really care yeah. um and so as time goes on i care less about school and my income would go up and then right now that where i am dude i'm like emailing professors like please pass me man please pass me i'm just trying to get out of here because bro i am like i'm all i'm done with school right like I've, it's because it's because i've proven it i've proven to myself that i can be an entrepreneur like it, yeah. there's no doubt in my mind if you asked me a year ago Oh, I was full of doubts, limiting beliefs, all that stuff. So, um, and yeah, and, and where my priorities are, bro, like, yeah, I was like at Thursday night last night, a bunch of friends, everyone's going out to the bars. I'm ripping a copywriting course, like all night trying to learn copywriting. Like my priorities, like you would like, it is, it is a, it is so rare to see me out partying and like all that stuff. And it, it's not like you can't, you can't do that. It's just like right now, I know that like, I'm at time in my life where like if I just stay in the trenches, go hard at this stuff that like I'll be enjoying, I'll be having a very fun time here soon uh, yeah. with uh, more fun than just going to a college party in a shitty frat house. So um, yeah. where my, where what my kind of fun is 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 uh, you know it's it's a lot lot cooler than that. So yeah, yeah it's just priorities and, and a lot, I think a lot of people in college I feel like they they have a fear of missing out and they need to fit into the crowd. I'm just like, I don't care what anyone thinks about me. I think a lot of people respect me because of that. Cause I just do whatever the hell I want. And yeah. they know me as like the weird entrepreneur fitness guy at school that like videos himself. So yeah, it's whatever. I don't, I don't really care. Go. I'm just here to make money. Yeah. Let's go. No, I love it. And I think something that you said is just like, you know, I think that until you really put yourself, you know, your back against the wall, like it's almost not going to work out. Like I've never... I've never really seen someone really succeed like to a high level by like having one foot in something in safety and then having one foot in risk. Like it doesn't work, you know, even for my yeah. own story, you know, like until I quit my nine to five, which I didn't even have any single customer when I quit. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't see any success before that. Right. Right. It's only when I had to do it that I actually did it. So yeah. Um, if anyone here is on the fence, and this happens actually mostly with even people who are already in business, they have a foot in, a, in an okay business, in an okay offer, let's say like old media, mm. shit is going up and down, up and down, and they're a bit uncertain, they lack really good systems, they lack better offers, and they're like, oh, but I'm already making 16k a month, you know, like, um, you know, let me stick to 16k a month to what I'm comfortable yeah. making, and it keeps them from being able to make 160k a month you know yeah right so yeah i think it's it's um yeah it's it's great man everybody should just go say fuck it and just fucking go all in man yeah i, I totally agree and um yeah that was one thing like with omedia like i was in 16k a month and then i basically took like three steps back to take 10 steps forward right so like maybe that like that next month my income really dipped and i actually still have clients with omedia i basically try to live off omedia and then the visionary group is like, just, I'm just trying to scale the hell out of that. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, so like, yeah, it, it was, it was risky, but I think that, um, you know, it's, it's any, I mean, I know you're, yeah, better decision. You, you can't just, I felt like you can just ride off of Facebook ads forever. I mean, we know that. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to adapt and be, be flexible and provide more yeah. value. Talking, talking about Facebook ad. So let's talk about your old offer and what your new offer looks like. Um, so what was the service that you were offering with O Media, which you're, you know, you say you're still doing versus um, this, uh, this new offer, like just describe what both offers are. Yeah, I think, I think my old, my O Media offer was very cliche, very standard. And like, it was like, um, you know, it was basically just running, running their advertising. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, 
it, 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 like there's a there's performance bonus it was great like whatever like it was just i felt like the offer every business owner has heard it before and it's that same standard pitch um and so yeah my offer now is it's interesting so i'm, I'm definitely it's still kind of in an iterative phase but phase but i've been having success with so we really started out really hard with a ten thousand dollar a month offer and I was like, I know the value that we can bring to this offer and it'll make sense. Like we're literally running these companies, um, you know, whole marketing department. Um, but the only issue we ran into is that we kind of have a little, little track record, you know, dishing over 10,000 and sure there's ways to get around that. But um, we basically came to a conclusion that we will we'll reduce our prices um, with like a very fat performance bonus. And before I had to run performance bonuses on the ad revenue, um, yeah. But now, since we're kind of omni-channel marketing, um, we're like, we're taking all your, like, we're taking the whole profit. So we have deals where we're just like taking all profit um, because we're driving all their e-com sales. So we do like X percent of your e-com profit. And so whatever. But our big offer is, yeah, we're pretty holistic service. We do, um, we do content, we have content creation. So branch that send out product to, our, we have creators in San Diego and Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. we do video shoots for brands we do we, we get recruit content creators for tiktok creation we manage our social media we do email we do ads it's like it's so much value packed in there that it's yeah. like it's so easy to sell it's almost too easy to sell right now that we we're increasing prices like there's no doubt yeah. um but yeah i mean it but it comes with like it is we're offering a lot i'll be real it's and it and to offer that at a high quality that's the biggest thing that we're trying to solve right now which is like Hire, we're hiring quick, we're building systems and making sure that we can scale as fast as we're scaling, making sure that the quality of work, uh, you know, maintains at its highest quality. So, yeah. And, and I'll go with that one more point is um, really because of consuming your content and within the program, like the whole TikTok thing is like you say TikTok to a brand immediately, they're all like lighten up and want to hop on calls. So, yeah. uh, and, and like we realized that, um, for these brands that maybe they're not qualified for kind of this whole package um, steel program that we have, we can just kind of downsell them onto more of a TikTok offer and it's more cost of, cost friendly. They understand it. It's kind of an entry point. And we found that like, yeah. we will run that. Like we work with a brand for like a month. They're like, holy crap. Like we love what you guys do. Here's all our other. And then they give us more work. So nice. um, yeah, that's really where we're at right now. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about the TikTok thing after, but um, I think that this is prob if you have, especially that you guys are like multiple like founders, I wouldn't have multiple founders just offering something like, oh, just Facebook ad because it would just be stupid, right? right? Yeah. But operationally speaking, having multiple founders, one managing like different sections of the business, especially now that you guys are offering, you know, all kinds of like acquisition channels. You guys are also solving content creation uh, shoots and all that good stuff. It's like, you know, it solves everything really. I mean, it's like the best thing you can do. And um, I think, you know, I think, um, you know, I think Alex Armose has really built a good, I think it was the value equation thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you give everything away and make it unreasonable for someone to say no. Because now a brand or a fitness, because you guys are in a specific niche, right? Which is also a wonderful thing instead of just trying to go after everyone. Um, a brand can't really, if that brand comes to you and they're like, hey, um, oh, we don't want Facebook ad. We want creative. Well, you can solve it. Or maybe another right. brand would be like, hey, we have it in-house. We only want paid ads or TikTok. Well, okay, guys, we have it. You know, so yeah. it's like yeah. you increase the, 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 the market size that you can actually serve by just having multiple mechanisms in place. Right 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 so yeah i yeah. think you, three founders bro like, i think you guys should take it to 300k a month oh minimum other, bro, minimum minimum, yeah, minimum. Yeah, I, agree. I agree no <laughs> I, I totally agree but that, yeah, yeah that's the th i mean that's the thing right like it's like um i was always anti like co-founders all that stuff like i, I just didn't want to deal with it i thought it'd be bad yeah. and i so far so far so good who knows maybe i'll look back yeah. in the year we all fuck each other over <laughs> no but maybe. uh <laughs> maybe um but um no, no no real talk though like um that it was just good because we we're able to solve more problems and that's what i found is like solve more problems you, brand hops on like you said they have these problems like awesome we'll solve it they're like wait really they're like yeah we have all this stuff and it's like boom sold so like yeah, it's no, interesting yeah. every single call we've hopped on 
We've never, we've only received one no. All like, it, it, that is a weird way to say it, but like every single Colin Hoffman, either they say like, we'll revisit this or whatever. Like they're in our, and they're hitting us up all the time. They're interacting with our content, which is a whole other thing. But like, they're still like tapped in that. Like we had a brand that was like, hold on. I don't know if it's a good time for me two months ago. And then they closed like this week and now yeah. we're running them. So it's like, I, I'm all for like selling people on the first, first or second call, but like also understanding that like some people will chill in your funnel for a while and then they'll jump on. So yeah, you know, this is the best I'm sure. So. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let's talk. Um, well, how, for you know let's talk briefly about the tiktok thing um how easy do you think it is how easy do you think it is to sell a tiktok offer whether it's just content creation not even including ads or maybe mm -hmm. content creation plus ads um i mean compared to anything else it's probably the easiest thing to to sell um because i mean and it's very easy to audit um now i will say i think this is where like, I think the agency competition will come into play. It's like, bro, like, okay, like, yeah, you can offer TikTok, but can you actually deliver it? And I'd argue that we can deliver it. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, and I think that anyone, anyone can, you just have to learn like what was required for that. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, TikTok is just like, it's just, you know how it is. Like every brand wants that next new thing. New thing yeah. You, you know, if you come to them, you say, Hey, I have this problem solved. Like in a lot of these people, are um you know 30 40 50 and this is the biggest advantage for like anyone that's like probably 16 years old to 25 is that like yeah. people love like that young you know mentality coming in be like yo i know tiktok and you know if you yeah. have content on tiktok if you know you have kind of some proof that like you know what's up they'll be like hell yeah, yeah. let's run with it so yeah yeah and and you know i was actually talking about tiktok like yesterday or two days ago, like, uh, I think you saw, he commented on the, on one of the TikTok, but he went crazy viral, man. I'm like, yeah. bro, it's the, 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 their algorithm. I don't know how they do it, but it's just insane. Right. Right. Insane, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just mentioned something pretty fun. It's like, and I want to make this clear as much as I can say that TikTok and just like Patrick just said that it's easy to sell. It's a pain to fucking deliver. Fucking pain. So yep. for anyone who wants to actually make that good money, like 50K, 100K per month easy, you're also going to be need to become 50K, 100K a month operationally sound. Like if you're not good at operation, right. hiring people, building teams and building incentive structures and having a team of creators, then to be honest, you're not going to succeed. No. Simply. Unless right. you come in the program and then we give you yeah. high level partners, right? Or maybe we connect you with... Uh, uh, Patrick's group and then they help you with your back end but you know something like that like it's going to be hard a pain to actually fulfill I know it and I'll, it I'll, I'll say it right yeah I mean we're trying to solve that right now and it is such a pain in the ass like dealing with content creators all that stuff it, it is hard and so yeah. I think it's great that you have partners that are you know can we, you can solve that problem for people which is awesome um, yeah but if for someone like me who's trying to solve it on our own it, it's yeah it's definitely difficult that's not easy it's not easy yeah. but that's what makes you great too you know because it's like the the harder it is to do something the less people will actually get in right right because Facebook ad, anybody could go find a contractor from, yeah. from the Philippines or India and be like hey I'm an agency owner. yeah you yeah know? yeah right that's exactly TikTok right. yeah TikTok you're not gonna you're not gonna win this easily it's not gonna be easy to pull off yeah right. cool um the next thing I wanted to talk about is acquisition how yeah. are you going about acquiring most of your customers yeah yeah um, yeah yeah so um I mean I think the like I I know you harp on it. I harp on it is just like content. It content really is everything. Um, and if you can really post content within your niche and show that you're like genuinely interested in that niche, I think it sets you worlds apart from any other cold email, Instagram DM that someone gets. Um, and so, right. So I, so right now our outreach methods are um, my co-founder. We're doing Instagram DMs on his account um, because he has, so, so, this is like a little cheat code that people might be able to tap in here. Yeah. Um, so, you know, on Instagram, how it says like followed by, and it says like profiles, like, like you, you say, you see that yeah. that is like a resume of clout. And if you have people in your space that follow you back and then other people in the space see that it's like, Oh, this guy must be tapped into something. Like, why is this cool entrepreneur oh, following yeah. me? So it's like, so his account 
has more of those that are following him. So we're like, Hey, yeah. let's roll with that. So he's more connected. So we're, run, we're running outreach there, which has been awesome, like crazy. And we're, and we're not even, we're just asking to hop on a call. And it's like, we're, we're kind of jumping over the loom step right now. Cause just, we're nice. just like, all right, let's just try this. So yeah. it's been good there. Um, we're um, my VA that you guys actually gave to me. Um, I had a meeting with her this morning. We're bringing her in to incorporate her with more like LinkedIn. And actually we have a company account that she's going to be managing and doing outreach from. So we're trying to attack it more there because we're just posting a bunch of content on that page to like nurture people. Mm-hmm. And then we have LinkedIn's been great. Um, my VA has been running LinkedIn on that. I'm pretty much connected with like everyone in the fitness space on there. And then now we're just rolling out um, a bunch of content everywhere. So yeah. um, I hired, a, I put in place, like a, um, I got a video editor. Um, I'm training my VA on how to do more social media management type stuff. So we're trying to automate the organic content that we put out. Mm -hmm. So that we're just like, I just know that that's so valuable and I can just have it running. And um, yeah, then we have some outreach stuff, but um, refer right at this point, referrals and kind of word of mouth is like starting to spread. And that's been awesome. So people be hitting us up out of nowhere. So I love it. I love it. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, a lot of people have heard of Instagram outreach, uh, whatever LinkedIn stuff, but I want to emphasize content. When did you notice that content was was like a game changer for you personally? Yeah, well, I um, I made like so I kind of chilled out now, but back in the fall, I made it a goal to just like post on TikTok and document my journey with just like I just knew I was kind of like doing cool shit, like and people would be tapped into what I'm doing. Um, so I did that, and then I realized that I was getting leads from TikTok just from like my TikTok content. I had a few videos like do well, whatever. And like people would, people would um, actually my, like my business partner that I'm currently like working with right now, who like I got as a client, he found me off TikTok, which is like <laughs> crazy. So awesome. yeah. So like TikTok was like a first place where I like posted content. I didn't really do it for like any like goal or just like posting it. And then, um, and I don't have a big following at all. Like just a few videos were popped off. Nice. And um, yeah. And then, so that, so when people are like, I'm when I'm hitting up people on Instagram and this was with Omedia, I was hitting up people. Like, they're like, Oh, like, I love what you're all about. I love your work ethic. I see what you're, you're up to. Like, I see you're a real person because if you have, I see a lot of agency accounts that have like maybe like six posts and like, it's like tips for social media, tips to improve on Instagram, like really like template Canva posts and oh, they do man. outreach. Like no one's opening that stuff. So I think the yeah. biggest thing is just look like a human, show your passion, show your interests the more you can do that and express that in like a cool way and look professional. That's, that's awesome. Um, kind of go for that authenticity a little bit. And, um, yeah, that, that's really, that's really where we're at right now. Um, yeah. we, we, <laughs> I, I, I'm excited. I'll, I'll tell this right now. Um, what we're actually all moving down to Dallas, Texas, and we're getting an office space down there because we're involved in other, uh, brands, um, as well. Yeah. Um, but we're going to be launching a, basically we're, we're hiring like in-house video guys to be like like a d-rock for gary v yeah. type vibe like we're getting that for the office space we're gonna be doing like weekly like vlogs that are kind of like i don't know barstool sports nelk boys type content where it's like we want to show the fitness lifestyle the business lifestyle like the all-around lifestyle so yeah. i think content like content is just everything and and, and, and i say that and like people will be like oh my god like vid- videographers literally it starts with you just picking up your phone and just like talking to the camera and stuff right like yeah. i can talk about all this fancy stuff that's because i believe in it but that's because i started with like an iphone you know so everyone can do content yeah yeah 100 percent. yeah and and you know i think you just mentioned this this typical thing of agency owners that make this mistake of and i it actually personally like it aggravates me mm-hmm. personally when i go on an instagram profile and i see posts made on canva i'm like bro are, are you are do you really think i'm going to give you 10 grand a month because you told me that for a facebook ad to work i need to install a pixel and have really good copy i'm like man please bro i, I don't even I, I don't i would actually block you right yeah, yeah but what people need to understand is that even the reason why most people are going to watch this video it's not because imagine if we had just text on this video reading mm-hmm. the conversation that we just had nobody would watch it right the reason why people well engaged is because it's other people people want to people relate to people who are just like that right right so like i think that the best thing you can do as a business owner is 
don't just be smart with your business. Don't just be have good systems, good offers, but also have a good personality. Because if you yeah. merge these two, then you become a fucking beast. Yeah. Literally. No, absolutely. That's right. That's, yeah. Yeah. And talking about Body, vlogs. Yeah. Uh, I'm Body also, Cardone, Gary V, Alex yes, Rose, are all, all these guys. Like, yeah. Like, man, Alex Ramos, he, he's yeah. making 85 mil. Why is he yeah. putting out video a day? <laughs> Why yeah. would 85 mil in a year, maybe now he's at 100. Why would someone who's already making 8.5, 10 million a month? Right. And, and it's like clockwork, right? He never misses a post. He's on your feet every single day, right? Every day. Just he gets, he gets your attention every single day. Every single yeah. day. You wake up Hormozy. You, you, yep. Everybody now likes Hormozy. I'm like, man, why don't we like Jeff Bezos as much? You know? <laughs> right. That's so true. Jeff yeah. Bezos makes a, a billion a week profit, bro. But fuck that guy. We but like but you know, we like Hormozy because <laughs> Hormozy is the one getting our attention. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, some people just prefer to be dumb, you know, just be blind to reality. It's like, do what Hormozy is doing, bro. Right. Don't listen to us. Maybe listen to him, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm actually trying to get my my vlogs. I don't want to start vlogs. Yeah, dude. Because I think, I think people, I think just giving people like content, business content is not enough to get people engaged or to build yeah, yeah. a really good audience. So, yeah, I'm going to get my brother. I'm going to hire him. So nice. I put him on a retainer. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's, 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 it, we got to invest in the business. You know, it's, I think yeah, it's dude. worth it down the line. So worth it. So fucking worth it. Yeah, perfect. Maybe I might find also the, maybe a girl could be watching this. Yeah, there maybe, you go. <laughs> maybe I might get married off of content, you know? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, cool. Probably. Awesome. So, um, yeah. So what advice would you give to, uh, to maybe the you from six months to 12 months ago from last year, let's say this time last year, what would you tell yourself in order to get this success that you've achieved now? Maybe. Sooner? Yeah. Hmm. That's a great, that's a great question. Um, I would say. <sighs> hmm. I want, I want to give you the answer to this. Um, I mean, I, 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 I'd say like, be like okay this is what i'd say i'd say like if someone like go go to make more connections in your niche and connect with people in your niche and like actually bring value to them so whether that's through content or through just communicating with them like i would do this thing where it's just like you know spam them with messages oh they didn't respond whatever like frame it so you know you I don't know, try to network with people, get to know them, get to know like how they talk, how they like actually operate. Cause they're your customers. Like actually like tap into that whole culture. And this could be in any niche that you're in, mm -hmm. tap into that culture. And then once you get, all it takes is one good connection with that niche that has some sort of pull, right? I, I connected with a guy, a guy saw my content who has a brand that works with a bunch of other brands. And he was like, yeah, like let's, let's hop on a call, hop on a call with him was cool with him and then all of a sudden people are i'm getting referrals from him just pouring in like who is this guy posting content right and so i think for me i was just more robotic with it i was just like sending out as many messages as possible like kind of just spamming a bunch of people and i don't know i think there's ways yeah. to approach it where you can really be genuine make connections and people will see that and then we're uh word will, sp will spread but that's not to say that volume doesn't matter like volume absolutely matters without reach um but like if you can if you can Get, it's basically like getting an into the club i found that yeah. like if you can just all take that like little in and then like a bunch of relationships can stem off that yeah so, yeah yeah i think that's a good point i think if you just get connected with the right people like everything from there it's like it's just like a leverage it's like a leveraged activity right meaning right. the the input versus output is completely like disproportional right right that's, right that's pretty smart that's pretty smart i've never really thought of that and i think for me probably the only reason why I have just like maybe a, a, few, a thousand subscribers on YouTube and just like 2000 followers on IG mm -hmm. it's probably because I haven't really connected with most of the bigger people in the, in my space mm -hmm. yeah if I did that it would be crazy yeah <laughs> it's yeah no it to yeah it totally depends on the industry like I found that the yeah. fitness industry everyone knows each other other industries might be different um but yeah that's that's something that I found you know super valuable yeah. so yeah, that's sick. Awesome, man. Awesome. Um, and um, so what have you learned from the past three months? Maybe we could um, 
end um, and on this? Like, what what are the new lessons that you found uh, in the last, in the, maybe since the beginning of 2022? I mean, yeah, I think it's solve as many problems as you can. And it seems so simple, but like with my Facebook ads agency, I wasn't really solving that many problems to be real. Mm -hmm. um, I saw maybe like one channel of marketing, um, but even then I didn't even fully solve it because there's still the creative element and then advertisers would just like blame the, oh, your creatives aren't good. That's not why ads aren't performing. <laughs> so I was like, all right, like what, like when a company comes and works for me, I want to like whatever problem they have, I want, I want to like solve that for them. So where that's creative influencer, all that stuff, I was like, okay, cool. Like I can solve all these problems and people, like people will love you once you like solve their problems. If you're pitching the same thing over and over and solve this like little micro problem, that's like part of a whole bigger thing. Like it's, you, yeah, you might get a few clients, you might get to 10 K a month. But like, I don't know. I've been really thinking about big picture things on like how to bring the most value and yeah, just, just solve, solve as many problems as possible and yeah. build a system around it. Right. And like, cause you can't just with that, you can't just be like all over the place trying to solve everyone's problems, getting all their shit on, like taking everyone's shit, but you can't scale. Yeah. Yeah. You got, you need systems, but yeah, that's what I'd say. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, and yeah, I think, I mean, it's, it's technically just common sense, you know, Right. It's like, why would a company come to you and give you their budget if they can go to someone else who can solve more problems for the same amount of money? Yeah. It's like, it's just like, I mean, even a kid who's, who's at a fucking only at a candy store, like could just make sense. It's like, why would I go to this store when for 10 bucks, I get one candy when I could go to this store and get for 10 bucks, I gained five candies. Right. Right. Like, it's just, it's just, man, it's like, bro, are you serious? Like, just exactly. don't tell them, you know, I think business is just common sense, it's just, but some people just, you know, are, are a bit slow, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Hopefully they're watching this. Whoever's watching this stuff is not slow because maybe there's yeah. people who watch other channels. Maybe it's people yeah. are told this Facebook ad message, but anyway, um, cool, man. Yeah. I think it's, it's been a minute. I think you're, you have, school you have business so i know you call in 10 minutes busy. sales call in 10 minutes let's go let us know how you close if you do close it maybe i can add a, a little segment at the end of this call and be like hey you closed it let's go <laughs> awesome man yeah so um last thing that i wanted to ask i've never really asked this on a, on a on a on an interview but how would you on a rating from one to ten what would you rate our done for you half a mil half a mil systems program zero hated it no 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 dude um no i really like everything about the program uh, um is awesome um i think the biggest thing right like it's not it's, it's not a course like people think it's a course and that's it's not like it is a consulting group and like the biggest thing and most value that i've been able to come out of it is one the whole virtual assistant thing was awesome for me that like really helped and like people don't understand how hard it is to find like a good virtual assistant and really know how to like those systems work. So that from day one, that was like the biggest problem that like was solved like right off the bat. Um, but two, like, like the most valuable thing that I see is like, you can have any, any issue or problem when it comes to your agency or what you're doing and you can bring it up to, you know, Serge and his team and, and all the coaches in there. It's like, you're going to get an answer and get that solved really quick. It's like pretty crazy. And so what I found is like on this journey of like an entrepreneur, it's very easy to be like a lone wolf, kind of feel like you're alone and all that stuff. And like, that's why I invest in like a community like this. It's like if I can be around a bunch of like-minded people who are making more money than me, it's like, it's a no brainer. So yeah, yeah, man, all great things. I rate it out of 10. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. I'll give it a solid 8.5 out of 10. That's good. That's it's good. always room to improve. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe I might add another mechanism. Can't boost your ego too much. Yeah. 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 Okay. But no, man. No. Thank you. And you know, man. For me, it's because I follow this mindset that you just mentioned. It's like, let me solve all problems. Yeah. yeah. Simply put, you know. And uh, but yeah, thank you so much. Um, and uh, yeah, let's try to do another interview by by July. And I yeah, need dude. I need you to be like over you know maybe multiple six figs bro i think you guys can do it i mean you guys are three guys you know yeah and there's no excuses there's no excuse like everyone should be bringing in six figures a month like just from their own efforts right exactly and then you burn it through ads build a bigger team and yep. yeah you guys are running an eight-figure company by the end of the year i 
I promise you, it's easy. I mean, yeah. you should, you should, that should be your standard, really. Right. Because yeah, you, I mean, yeah. you just wasted four years in fucking school. So you need to right. fucking make that shit back. Right. You're goddamn right. You are goddamn you have right. No, you have no choice. Like, you, you know, there's that. no choice. There's no, no choice. <laughs> so, fuck. So, yeah, you have more, 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 more responsibilities. But, yeah, great, great decision. I think you made the, an amazing decision. So, thank you sure. so much. And then, uh, yeah, close that deal. Okay. Will do. Awesome. Have a beautiful day, man. Bye bye. Thank you, bro.